In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a leaderboard that collects and displays scores. In this case, waffles and bacon. I got two waffles already and a piece of bacon. Let's grab another piece of bacon and watch this update. Boom. Let's get a waffle. Boom. You get the idea, right? I'm also going to go over the player service, particularly the player added event. And I want to introduce the test server, this third tab, to do multiplayer testing so that we can do testing with more than just this one guy running around. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and get started with that. All right, here's a fresh base plate. Let's go to server script service, hit the plus sign, add a script. All right, so we'll go ahead and call this uh, leaderboard. And this is gonna be, of course, the code for the leaderboard. Get rid of the print statement. I need to get access to my player service, that right there, that service right there, up under workspace. Well, I can just do a variable, I'll call it players, and then I'll say game, get service, players, voila. I have access to the player service. I need a function, local function, add board. That's gonna add the leaderboard to the player as they enter the game. So I'll pass in the player, and how am I going to call that? I'm going to use the player service dot player added event. So the player service keeps track of when players are added to the game. It fires a player added event that we can connect to a function, add board. Get rid of those two extra parentheses. So when player is added, add board is called, player added knows to stuff a player in there, right? And now we have a player that we can add a board to. So we'll say local, let's make a variable for the board. We'll make an instance new folder. So we're creating a new folder and we're making the parent the player. That essentially adds the folder to the player. This will work with model also, right? So folder or model, I always use folder, right? And now let's rename our board to leader stats. Let's test our game, play, make sure there's no errors, no errors, good. Let's go to our players, there's Simtech Gamer 13 look at that, there's a leader stats, but did we add that there? We did. There's some other stuff in here too, but let's add stuff to the leader, the leader stats so that we actually get a board that displays, right? This is just an empty folder. We need things in leader stats. And then the leader stats UI is going to magically appear. That's going to be really cool. All right. You don't have to do that much for it. Uh, where's my cursor? There we go. Let's make a variable called waffles. Instance new uh, int value. An int value, an integer is like one, two, three, four. So the int value is a Roblox object, object that holds integers. And we are going to make the parent of that int value board and then waffles needs a name we'll call it waffles this name right here is what's going to show up on our board so if we hit play oh look at that we got it there's our waffles let's go to the player service there's our there's our our player there's our leader stats ha waffles if we click on waffles we're going to see value Right. If we change that using the properties window, you're going to see that value change to five. But in a regular game, you're not going to have this. You can't have some programmer sitting around updating scores. You need to do this by code. So let's go ahead and do that. First, let's add our bacon, though. Right. Waffles is not sufficient for breakfast. We need bacon, too. Let's copy this. Control C. Paste it. Let's make this bacon. It is also going to be an int value that's going to be on the board. We'll, we'll call this bacon because we need to rename bacon. Now let's call it bacon with a capital B. We play it. We got two values here, right? So it was quite easy to add that. If we look, well, you, you know that it's going to be in here, right? Players, there's my player, and then bacon and waffles. They're both listed there cool beans 
All right, now we need to add bacon and waffles to our world and update our leaderboard. That's not gonna be that hard. Let's go to the home tab, get a part. Let's call this waffle. And we'll make the size different. Go down to the properties, size. I'll make it four by 0.3 by four. Just scooch that to the ground there. I'm gonna use a, an image for this. So I'm gonna go to my waffle, hit the plus sign, add a decal. The decal will default to the front of the part, right? If you go ahead and do this, you can change it to the top or you can go to face and then manually select top. It's already selected, right? That's an easy one to get at the top. Let's see, we need an image to put, an image or texture to put in here. Let's do that. Let's go to toolbox. I already had some images that I saved off in case we can't find the images we want. Let's try and look for them though. Let's go to images under marketplace, that first tab. And I'm gonna look for our waffle. Waffle is actually easy to find. Bacon was hard. And let's grab this guy here. Right click, copy asset ID. See that is the third one down. Copy asset ID, go to your decal, under texture, right click, paste. When you hit enter, the RBX asset ID colon slash slash is gonna be prepended. And now you have an image on your decal, which is on your waffle. Cool. Let's make those, ooh, let's make those sides a proper color, right? That's a gray waffle. Let's make it, and what's that? I think that's the one I used in the demo. Yeah, that's pretty good. That looks like a waffle. Cool. Since we're here, uh, let's go ahead and make our bacon. Add a part and call this bacon, right? Go ahead and resize it. I'll size it. Uh, I'm gonna intentionally size it so that I have to resize it. 10 and 0.3 and two. That way I can show you something, All right? So, so 10.3 and two, let's add a decal to it. Decal, notice the decal, a simple decal doesn't have a rotate feature. There are ways around it, but we're not gonna mess with that. I'm gonna click the top so the decal is on the top. I have the toolbox. We're never gonna find the bacon that we want. It took me like an hour, but we'll do a search real quick. Maybe it'll pop up. Nope. So what I did is I saved it off. I just right clicked the decal when I had the one that I wanted and it's gonna show up in, if you click this inventory, my images, that's the bacon that I wanted. Right click, copy asset ID. I'll put a link in the description to that bacon if you want it, All right? And then right click, paste that ID, bacon. Now my bacon's not oriented in the proper direction and we don't really have a rotate on this uh, decal that's easy to implement. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go to bacon. I'm gonna change the, the dimensions. So instead of 10.3 and two, I'm gonna make it 2.3 and 10. That's an easy way around that. Now it looks like bacon. And let's change the color of the sides, which is really hard to find that right color. So I'm just gonna get it close. There we go, terracotta. That ain't bad actually. It ain't good either. Oh well, that's fine. All right, uh, let's put a script on these. Let's start with waffle. All right, we'll put a script and we'll call this waffle pickup. You will be happy if you name all your scripts. Once you get like 50 scripts, you don't want everything called script, right? Uh, we need a reference to our waffle. So we'll call it part in the script, script.parent. So there's our script, there's our parent. That part is the waffle. We need a function, local function, on touch, typical touch event. Other part, that's the part that touched my waffle. How do we call that part touched connect on touch? Make sure there's not extra parentheses there, right? So when somebody touches it or anything touches it, maybe a tree falls on it or something like that, this is gonna fire. This other part might be a hand, it might not. 
we want to check to see if it's a player. We don't want to check for the humanoid. We want the player, right? We don't want a zombie getting our bacon. Right, so I'm going to say local players, just like in the leaderboard. Uh, game, get service, players. Now we have our player service. We are going to get or attempt to get a player. We'll use the player service colon get player from character, right? So if this is a hand or the foot, the character is going to be the parent of the hand or the foot. So if I say other part dot parent, let's move this to the other line so you can see it. In Roblox, you could have multi-line statements. You don't have to put like an underscore or anything. Some of those other languages require that. I'm just doing this for your benefit so you can see it. You could leave it on one line if you want, right? So the other part parent, if that's a hand or a foot, that other part, the parent will be the character. And then the players is going to be able to find the character and return it to that variable. But if it's a tree or something, it's not going to find the player. So we'll say if player exists, then we know we have a player. Another way of doing this, I'll leave it like this, but you don't have to do it. It's a little more wordy. You could use that tilde plus, which means not equal to nil, right? So those are essentially the same. So if player is not equal to nil, let's enter this if block, we'll say player. What do we have? Leader stats that's on the player. And we are dealing with waffles. We need the name of the thing that's on the board. So if you go to your leaderboard, we want that, whatever we named it to be that. But remember, there's a value associated. Then we'll say plus equals one. So that doesn't assign it one. That takes the old value and, uh, and adds one to it, right? Just a little bit of a shortcut. Cool. And then let's destroy our waffle, which is a part variable in this script. We'll say destroy. There we go. Let's get it. What do we do? Waffle? There's waffles. Cool beans. All right. Now that we have that one done, bacon's going to be easy. I will go ahead and add the script. We'll call this bacon pickup. Bacon pickup. I'm going to click on my, I'm going to double click my waffle pickup. I'm going to copy it. Control C. I'm going to go to bacon pickup. Paste. Control V. All I need to do is change this to bacon. We are set. And we'll get a piece, we'll get a waffle and we get a piece of bacon. Sweet. Right. And of course you could duplicate those in the workspace, make as many as you want. Maybe go back to my for loops and see how to do a spawner, have it raining waffles and bacon. That'd be cool. All right, let's do the test server. So go to test. I'm only going to be able to use two players because my computer's going to crash because it's really old. If I use more, I can get away with three, but it takes a long time. I'm going to hit the start button. So things are going to start up. The server is going to start and then we're going to get two clients, right? I am going to pause the video until something interesting happens. And that way you don't have to wait that long. Oh, here comes the server. I didn't pause it yet. So the server starting now I'll pause it until one of the player services come, or one of the player windows pop up one of the clients. All right. One client window is popping up. And the second window is popped up somewhere. I can't see it. Oh, here it is. Boom. That's popping up too. Cool. And my little guy fell over. That's all right. Let's go here. There we go. So we have access to both of these players. This is going to be very, very handy when you start doing client server stuff. Make sure that all the stuff that you think is happening to you and is really cool can be seen by somebody else, right? That's tricky. Let's go ahead and get a waffle. See, there's our leaderboard with both our players. Unfortunately, they don't give them different names. There we go. We got one waffle. We got one piece of bacon. It showed up for our other guy. It's working well. Great. So I will see you in the next video. Good luck with that. This is a really handy thing to know.